African Story, formerly produced for radio, presented and read by Richard Nichols. Clerk looks up just then and asks, Is everything okay? Will you be able to pay the deposit for the underground parking, Mr. Lewis? The bank now reported to the police that an attempt to pay for services was made, but as expected, the transaction failed. No location was given to the whereabouts of Dean at the time of the two attempts to pay. Both transaction details only had a reference number as proof that an attempt to pay was made on two cards. Police Sergeant Frank Lowe and Lieutenant Danny Kruger did manage to find a lead when a witness taking a walk towards the mall reported seeing Dean's car making the U-turn in Sheraton's driveway and turn right at the intersection of McCarthy and Chase Valley Road. He had also been at Cascades and witnessed Dean sitting in his car in the parking lot about the same time that our two officers arrived at Cascades. Sorry, I have no way of paying. I will be back soon, replies Dean. Dean is seen leaving the reception and walking to his car, looking irritated and tired as what should have been a lovely lunch with Linda turned into a nightmare. Upstairs in the hotel is Linda hoping now for a good night's rest and looking forward to the arrival of her food to her room. Her attention is drawn to the window overlooking the pool when there is a tap on the door. A voice calls out, Room service, ma'am. Opening the door, Linda is greeted by a tall young gentleman dressed in a hotel uniform, a blue shirt and light grey long pants. Linda takes the trolley from the young man and before closing the door, hands him a 25 rand tip. Next morning, you're right, we need to find Dean. Word on the street, he kidnapped the Winters woman, said Kane on the phone. I've always considered Dean as an impulsive person and reckon he's not the one to take no for an answer when women are concerned, replies Kenny. This is why we need Leon back on the job. It's been too long after the shooting and no word on who did the deed. Possibly someone is protecting Fred Winters, but unfortunately our shooter came to know of our plan and times the execution of the shooting shortly after I spoke to you about contacting Leon, replies Kane. I'm sure Leon is holding out on us and knows too well who shot him, said Kenny. Dean spends the night in his car and just as he gets some shut-eye, security knocks on his window and asks him to move out of the parking lot. He spends the night moving from point to point, trying hard not to attract attention. He ends up going to his friend, James, and sleeps on the couch. Ends up ruining James and Mary's special home dinner to celebrate being together for five years. Bob drops off Peter at his friend's home and leaves for the office. On the way, he receives a call from Ben Coleman, the one of the staff 
was attacked by two male lions, not severely, thank God, as these lions were not in good shape health-wise. I would have it a guess that the attack was perpetrated by Kifor and Angel of Death as they got into a fight with the hyena in the forest, replies Bob. Call ends. Linda sits in the sun by the pool having a gin and tonic and reading the newspaper. Two young children are playing near the pool, but where are the parents? Both brother and sister are way too young to swim without armbands. She calls one of the pool attendants over and informs him. Sorry, I see these youngsters are without adult supervision. Do you know the whereabouts of their mom and dad? Asks Linda. No, sorry, I have no idea, was the reply and walked away. You've been listening to an episode of African Story, read and written by Richard Nichols. Join me again for another exciting instalment of African Story coming soon. Mm -hmm.